welcome to this week's review. And before I start this review, to my left and to your right is a Stevie Wonder LP. Can you see that? And uh, Mr. Wonder is sitting down. And behind him is a disc at an angle. And I think it's supposed to represent a vinyl record. But if you look close, I'll try and get a cover sleeve and I'll put the sleeve up close. If you look close, it looks exactly like the Platamat from an Audio Technica LP5X. I, for one, want to know how close the links are between Stevie Wonder and the technical team at Audio Technica. I think we should be told. But back to this review, and we're going to be looking at a phono amp. And this particular phono amp was born and bred and built in the UK, in England. And it was created by one man, Mr. Graham Fowler. Graham Fowler is a much respected hi-fi designer. Now this particular product, well, it's not exactly new. In fact, it's pretty old. <laughs> so why am I talking about this now? Well, for two reasons, really. Firstly, just because a product has been out for a while doesn't mean that everyone knows about it. Often products are reviewed in particular magazines that certain people don't read. Lots of people on the internet don't read magazines at all, or haven't read a hi-fi magazine in their life. So they may have missed all of the reviews of this particular phono amp. Second reason, well, the second reason I'll probably talk about at the end of this video. So remind me when I get there, will you? There is a third reason why I'd like to talk about this phono amplifier, which is called the Dino, by the way. And it's because of this. I do not know of another Ferno amplifier, which includes a built-in upgrade path. That is, you can add technologies to the basic Dino, which is a Mark III in its current form. Mark III, I think it is. So after you've initially purchased a Dino, you can add boxes to it and cables to enhance the performance of the basic unit. Yes, I'm fully aware that you can buy phono amplifiers, and then you can add, in some cases anyway, an external power supply to give you that two box look. And sure, that is an upgrade, but Tricord takes the Dino much further than that. And that's what I'm really talking about. And obviously, I'll talk about that in this video. Now, before we go any further, let's talk prices, shall we? The Dino Mark III phono amplifier, which comes with a built-in small power supply, which is external, incidentally, that's priced at £549. You can then upgrade the basic Dino by adding an external power supply. This is called the Dino Plus. It costs £360. And basically, the Dino Plus is connected by an external cable to the Dino Mark III. The Dino Plus power supply itself is powered by its own IEC power cable. You can also get an upgrade cable. This is called a high performance lead, and it basically connects the Dino with the Dino Plus, and that costs £159. Finally, you can take away the Dino Plus, which is based on a toroidal transformer, and you can replace that with a what's called never connected power supply. This never connected power supply is priced at £597. So basically you can start by buying a Dino Mark III phono amplifier, then you can steadily upgrade, ending up with a system priced around £1,300-ish. So let me talk about the boss, shall we? Graham Fowler, who is the boss of Tricord, well, he's two things, I would say. Firstly, he's one of the good guys in the hi-fi industry. Easy going, with no ego to climb over open, honest, and above all, talented, damn him. Secondly, he's a canny individual. 
Fowler's work is held in such high esteem in the industry as a whole that there's little bits of tricord in many other people's hi-fi products. Now to me, that sort of thing is always a good sign. If the industry itself likes his work that much, then, well, he must be good, hey? Also, therefore, it must be quite a change for him to talk about his own stuff badged with his own company logo. And talk to Fowler, I will, and I'll put his quotes on screen during this review and you can read along with me. Now, before we get to the closer look section, I want to put the Dino in context, because there is one, and just chat a little bit about the history. If you want to skip, then nip downstairs into the description and you can navigate around this video, because there's some chapter headings down there. So if you're off, I'll see you there. For everyone else, well, the Dino was first developed many years ago while Fowler was working with the late and great John Michel of Michel Turntables fame. At that time, Fowler was producing a range of electronics for Michel, and he still does. Michel is one of those companies he actually provides parts for, including an amplifier that one or two people might remember called the Electo, and also another phono amplifier called the Delphini. Fowler said, like all the stuff I did for John, I created the electronics and he created the chassis. The core circuitry of the Dino is based upon the Delphini, and I worked on the Dino with John. The original Dino case was produced by John Michel, which was why it had that weird original acrylic chassis. That case was a Michel thing. The Dino was never sold under the Michel banner, though. So that Michel orientated Delphini and the Dino, well, they're cousins. In fact, the Dino is a smaller version of the same thing. Smaller board smaller box, and virtually the same philosophy in terms of circuit design. That is, it uses high-performance voltage regulators, two active gain stages, and passive equalization. From those early days, the Dino has undergone much circuit refinement. We use microphone amps at the front ends of the phono stage. Everyone we talked to said that you needed a different input circuit for a moving coil, and a moving magnet cartridge because of the varying noise sensitivities. We got around that by using a mic amp. We can get just about any cartridge using this method, and the output is fine. That mic amp goes to a fully passive equalization stage using Mundorf capacitors. So basically, that's the context of the Dino's design. And as we're about to go techie, I think we need to take a closer look. And welcome to the closer look section for the Tricord Dino Mark III. And as you can see, it's a fairly dinky and simple little box we have here. Controls and sockets are kept to a bare minimum. On front of the compact, well-built aluminium chassis is a simple power light on the rear. And let's flick to the rear because there's nothing else to talk about on the front. Is a power connector plus upgraded phono sockets. Underneath, and we don't often go underneath in the closer look section, you will find dip switches, which are used for cartridge gain loading. And while we're here, let's look at the upgrades, shall we? The first upgrade is the Dino Plus, and all you need to do is to remove the standard power supply and plug in the Dino Plus. The Dino Plus features a switch on the front with a connector to the Dino Mark III on the rear. There's a one meter lead that runs in between. 
the reason being that both boxes should be kept apart to prevent noise from one box invading the other. With the DC Plus, instead of taking AC power into the phono power socket, you're now taking fully regulated DC into that phono stage. In the Plus, you have a pretty large toroidal transformer. Now, toroidals are very good indeed, and they offer lots of power. The fields are concentrated and they're pretty efficient. For Tricord, Graham Fowler turned to one of the UK's transformer experts, a chap named Paul Holden. And Paul Holden's work, again, is all over this industry, but he makes all of the transformers for Tricord. The size of the Dino Plus's power supply is actually, well, massively overrated for what it does. However, this reduces the noise because it's not stressing. It's properly designed and made for the job. It's not an off-the-shelf model. It's actually made from the ground up for Tricord. The next upgrade is the standard lead, which you can see connecting the Dino Mark III and the Dino Plus. The standard lead uses four strands of copper. The high performance lead includes four twisted pairs of wires that are cross coupled, and that's done to reduce common mode noise. Again, that should improve sound quality. You'll find copper inside this particular cable. The only reason silver wasn't used was because it was, well, rather expensive. The final upgrade replaces the Dino Plus power supply, and it replaces it with what's called the Never Connected power supply. This Never Connected supply sits in the same chassis. It's the same size. So if you're short of space and you can't afford an upgrade with a larger footprint, then this should put a smile on your face. The Never Connected supply actually looks a lot like the Dino Plus, but in fact weighs a lot lighter. Instead of a large toroidal in there, there's a small toroidal because the latter is not the driving force of the power supply anymore. The driving force are output capacitors. They are the things that do the job. So you only need the toroidal power supply to fill the capacitors, so the impedance becomes less of an issue. For those who know their tricords, this is a generation two never connected power supply, and it's been refined with an improved circuit design. So what on earth is a never connected power supply then? Well, this power supply drops the noise floor for the oncoming AC mains. It does that by using two capacitors and a MOSFET. Basically, you've got two storage capacitors built in series. So you fill the first one with power, and then when that's full, you transfer the charge from the first capacitor to the second capacitor. And you do that with this MOSFET. Hence, you are basically electrically isolating the capacitor from the mains. So the phono amp itself is powered only from the quiet capacitors, not from the noisy mains. The quality of the capacitors, therefore, was crucial. Tricord decided to use Panasonic HA style capacitors, but it did listen to a wide variety of others before it made that choice. So how does this lot sound? Well, I decided to test each component and each upgrade stage to see what changes, if any, I could hear and to gauge the value of each upgrade. So let's get to the sound test section and we'll check out those results. And welcome to the sound quality tests for the Tricord Dino Mark III and family, I suppose. And I'll tell you straight away, the basic Dino Mark III offered a good overall sonic performance right from the off. There was a solid level of quality present, but it was noticeable just how good the mid-range was for the price. This, for me, is one of the stars of the show for the basic unit. 
I initially played an old 70s album by Ananda Shankar. I think it was Ravi Shankar's son, Ananda Shankar. And he played a cover of the Rolling Stones' Jumping Jack Flash. This is a self-titled album of Shankar's. This, as you might expect, was a sitar-heavy track. And there was some contemporary backing. He also included a Moog synthesizer in there. I know some people call it Moog. I just happen to like Moog. The track was rich and full in its presentation, giving the music a real luxurious feel that added to the depth of information emanating from this broad soundstage. The second star item from the basic Dino was the extension to that very soundstage. It wasn't just the width of the soundstage itself, it was what it did when it got there. Right on the edges, I could hear synth tinkling and synth noodling. For the price, this is fairly rare and a feature that elevates the Dino above much of the competition. Moving from the sitar to the more familiar tones of David Bowie's Sound and Vision and the 1977 album Low, bass on this album was pretty tight and punchy without any obvious blaring effects leaking into the mid-range. Here again the Dino benefited from the expanded sound stage. The Dino created a large room for the performers to play within. In addition, it also created new room for the vocalist. Bowie's voice was full and deep. Also, when the treated drum hits out at the beginning of the track, there seems to be more activity within, while a heap of information exudes from the centre of the sound itself. Next up was Ghosts from the album Tin Drum, 1981, from the band Japan. This is a track that's full of special effects and lots of space. It needs air, it needs time, it needs silence to provide emphasis. Because of the rich mid-range, David Sylvian's vocals had again a luxurious delivery, and because the soundstage featured plenty of instrumental separation, his lead vocal was able to articulate tonal variation. So far, so good, but it was time to upgrade. So I dropped the default power supply and I added the Dino Plus, featuring its UK-made power supply in its own chassis, and I carried on with Ghosts. Now as soon as the bass kicked in, well I couldn't restrain a rather small but effective wow. There was so much maturity in those lower frequencies now. The control was immense. It's almost as if the Dino was saying, it's okay, I'm in total control here, calm yourself and fear not. This control also arrived with power, and more than that, potential. The promise of more power, if required, was even more significant. This was partly because the bass lines had well, they had a greater focus and stability now. Moving back to Ananda Shankar, the improvement in bass stability was present here, but I also noticed a lowering of the noise level, which meant that the bass now had more room to manoeuvre. This meant that the bass guitar had a larger role to play in the track, which added a rhythmic impulse that wasn't there before. More than that, the sitar sounded Free. There was additional air and space around the upper mids, while the treble had a distinctly spacious energy to it. Similarly, in the Bowie track, it was now easier for the ear to track the important bass guitar lines throughout. Previously, it, well, it had been a little bit lost for a few moments as the upper mid noise masked that bass detail. With the lowering of the noise, the bass was visible, but that also helped the vocals, especially the double-tracked female vocal in the midpoint, which now had more character. It was at this point that I changed the interconnecting cable between the Dino and the Dino Plus with the high performance lead. Playing the Shankar LP, the cable lifted the two-box system to a new level. With the new cable added, I was able to hear more detail within the early guitar work and the female harmony section in the chorus. The general soundstage also sounded a lot more confident and disciplined. On the Bowie track, while the bass had lots of weight, 
it was the upper mids that were the differences brought about by the cable. All of the vocals were able to provide greater detail and clarity, which was extended to the almost choral nature of the Bowie double track, which now had a more rhythmic vibrato effect on the tail end of his vocal sequence. Finally, I added the never connected power supply and I flicked back to Ananda Shankar. And again, the noise floor dropped. But there was more to it than that. It was almost like the sound stage was restructured. So the effect for the first time was an almost ensemble piece instead of the sitar just being front and center and dominating the entire thing. Before the never connected supply was connected, the sitar sounded as almost as if it was 20 paces ahead of the rest of the band. Now, after the upgrade, the sitar blended more into the mix, so it was part of the band. All of that meant that there was a greater richness coming from the music now. Same could be said of the Bowie track. There was a new complexity to the Bowie vocal, which now featured an enhanced texture. The vocal sounded more like a human voice, in fact, with vocal complexity in evidence, while reverb from guitar strings traveled further. So how can I conclude this review of the Tricord Dino Mark III plus upgrades? Well, let me give you a few final thoughts. We'll do some pros and cons, and I'll give you a rating. <laughs> No, no. It has to be said that just buying a Dino Mark III is recommended as a top quality purchase all in its own right. In fact, such as the quality of the unit, many vinyl fans will buy it and never find the need to upgrade from there. It could very well be the end of the upgrade line for many users. That said, you would be missing out on some mightily improved sounds from the other associated components if you did decide to leave it there. With each upgrade, the Dino showed just how much extra capacity it really has. So if you decide to walk the full upgrade path, then I'm sure you won't be disappointed. One extra tip, if you do decide to purchase a Dino Plus or a never connected power supply at some point, I would advise making an extra investment in a top quality mains cable. Don't just make do with the black kettle lead that is supplied in the box. Upgrade to something with a bit more quality. Now before we get to the pros and cons, at the beginning of this video I said it might be a good time to buy the Dino now. Reason being, well last time I talked to Graham, which was a little while ago now, he was going to retire. In fact, he should have retired right now. Problem is, the hi-fi industry wouldn't let him. They needed him to produce stuff for them. And so Graham graciously said, OK then. So he put his retirement plans on hold. For how long though, I don't know. And when our Graham does decide to hang up the closed sign, I don't know what will happen to the Dino. Now maybe Graham has contingency plans in place and the Dino will be continue to be sold for a long time to come. However, I don't know. And I would advise you, if you're thinking about buying a Dino, do it soon. Now what I'm saying is not an official line. I haven't discussed this opinion with Tricord. It's my own gut feeling. Just to make absolutely sure, if you're intrigued by the Dino, I would make a move on it sooner rather than later. Pros and cons. First up in the good section is the low noise, which increases every time you upgrade, every time you progress down the upgrade path. Secondly, the build quality. These are solid products, solid boxes, and it feels like they're gonna last a long time. Next up, the upgrades themselves. Well, they're easy to do. It's just a case of 
unplugging and plugging in cables, basically. Value for money, I also thought that was a highlight, especially for the sound quality that you're getting. And also, when you're upgrading, you do that when you're able to, when you're financially capable of doing that. Finally, the overall sound quality as a whole, which constantly and steadily improves. But the basic Dino Mark III does start at a high point. And in the bad section, absolutely nothing at all. What does that mean for the ratings? Well, for each and every one of the upgrades, I'm going to give each of those a groovy award-winning rating of 8 out of 10. For the Dino Mark III on its own, I'm going to give that a deeply groovy 9 out of 10. I was very impressed indeed. Congratulations to Tricord. Congratulations to Graham Fowler. And I'll put a link for his website downstairs in the description. And that's me done, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And while I'm talking about the description, also down there you can find chapter headings, as I mentioned earlier on, where you can navigate around the video. There's other links to my Facebook page, my website, and my Patreon page, which also has exclusive material over there and does support this channel. So any help you can give me via Patreon is much appreciated indeed. Please also down there if you can click on the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already done so and it just helps to keep this channel growing. I'll be back on Friday with Hi-Fi News etc. Lots of goodies in there. Until that time folks, bye bye for now.